African-American president of the United States? I beg to differ. So as a superintendent, when I take this suit off later today and I go to visit a department store in my jeans and a t-shirt and a cap and my boots, chances are I'm going to get followed. For no other reason than shopping in brown skin. Now, how many of you have had that experience? If you're an African-American male, I guarantee you've had that experience. If you're a woman of color in certain department stores, I guarantee you've had that experience. I guarantee you've been looked at a little differently when you go to check out. Like, can she really afford that? So you cannot talk about educating our children of today without talking about race and class. So now we've, I've said it. So what does that mean for us? Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you go through your day today and you have, you listen to what Dr. Noguero is going to talk about. Listen to what he's talking about and relate that to your experiences, whether it's in San Francisco or somewhere else. But when you hear our students tell their reality and their stories, I want you to listen to what they are saying to us. I recently had the opportunity to spend some time with a group of our students from Lowell High School who shared with me some stories that quite frankly, not in front of them, but when I went back to my office, I cried. How could our students be in that kind of pain just because they want an education? So I'm gonna ask us all as we think about what we're, we're talking about today and we're living what we're talking to today, I'm gonna to ask us to do two things. And some of you have heard me say this before, but I'm gonna say it very, very clearly. I'm gonna ask you, number one, stop talking about school improvement. We cannot be about school improvement, we cannot be about systems improvement. And I'll tell you why we can't be about school improvement or systems improvement. Because I will pose it to you that from the very initial beginnings of the public education system in America, it was created to have a two-tiered system. In fact, Thomas Jefferson wrote very eloquently about it. Eloquently for him. But he wrote about this two-tiered system, one for the learned and one for the laboring. And that if this public education system really did work well, we might be able to rake a few geniuses from the rubbish. So if you're about improving that system, that since the mid-1700s has been a cornerstone of the developmental design of public education, if you want to improve that, then you need to be here really, really badly at this conference. Because I don't think anyone here wants to improve that system. So let's stop talking about improving system, let's talk about changing systems. We're about systems change. We're gonna change that system. Because along with that, either you believe that black and brown kids can physically, psychologically, geneal genealogically, cannot succeed in a system, or it's something else. It's a system that isn't serving them. And I think we're all here because we believe that the system hasn't served them. And the second thing I'm going to ask you to do is stop talking about parent engagement. That is such a low bar. So let's not talk about parent engagement because I guarantee you, you hurt somebody's baby, I, get you, I guarantee you that parent's going to be engaged. Right? Engaging simple. The real work for us is empowering our parents. How do we empower our parents? How do we give parents knowledge and information that they can use to access the system, to challenge the system, to advocate for their children in the same way that upper middle class, very empowered parents use every single day to advocate for their children? That's what we're about. That's how we start changing the system, when we empower our communities with the knowledge, with the access, with the ability to advocate for their children. And I would also say very, very respectfully that that is the work of a public education system. So we have some wonderful examples in San Francisco of where this work is taking root, but we also have a number of examples where we're not proud of how we've served our communities. So the bad news is we haven't yet reached our goal. But the good news is, we're all, on the, we're all on the job. 
We're committed to making it happen. And if you're committed to making that happen, you have an ally in me as your superintendent. You have an ally in the chief academic officer and all of his staff, and you have an ally in the Board of Education. Because in San Francisco, very unapologetically, right out there, we're gonna say, we're about changing the system, we're about empowering our parents, and we're about truly making access and equity for every one of our students in San Francisco's public schools a reality, not just a dream. That's why you're here today. Now isn't that a little more real than good morning, thank you for coming on a Saturday, right? We got work to do. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's turn off our cell phones and be present in the moment because we got work to do. Let's get to it, my friends. With that, I do want to say I'm really proud of all of you for being here this Saturday morning. Bienvenidos. By the way, that assignment, you're going to get lunch anyway. You don't have to do that assignment. 